Well, hello and welcome back again. Um, in this episode, I want to go over our national uh, debt crisis and, and why I think as uh, living in this country, we should be really concerned about it. Uh, you know, I'm sure you've been hearing the news and perhaps podcasts or you read blogs uh, in regards to this, but I wanted to jump in and kind of do, uh, you know, this uh, episode because I think it's so extremely uh, concerning. I mean, the growing U.S. national debt, um, it's drawing an increase in a lot of attention. And the reason for that is because at this point, we have really reached over $34 trillion. I even have a hard time actually saying they're trillion with a T. I mean, first there were millions and then there were billions, right? And now it's trillions what we have. And, and, and the worst thing that really concerns me why I'm sharing this, uh, you know, information with all of you is the fact that it has doubled in the last 15 years. If you look at this article that I'm sharing on screen, it says right there it has doubled over the past 15 years. You know, we're not dealing with 30 years or 40 years of accumulation debt. This is just in the last 15 years. And if you recall, um, because you're from an older generation, right, like Gen X and so on, or even baby boomers. I mean, we went through a financial crisis during 2008. Um, the big difference is that if you do recall also, um, as I do, there was no inflation. Think about that for a moment. We were not going through inflation. Yes, gas prices have went up, no doubt. Uh, we had some high rents. Uh, but actually, food never really increased as what we live in right now, which is outrageous, right? We talk about, you know, three, five percent. I, I don't think so. I think, again, uh, unfortunately, all these numbers that we're hearing, it seems like the government keeps uh, rectifying and doing revisions out of the financial GDP and everything because apparently somebody's making mistakes in the report, but then they want to rectify them. I'm not sure what's going on, but definitely... Uh, uh, I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, misinformation out there, even coming from the government or I hate to say it's a cover up, but I mean, I'm, I'm starting to get a little suspicious here because I cannot understand how a government cannot keep track exactly of the balance sheet in their financials when we're talking about being one of the biggest nation in the entire globe. Um, so let's go ahead and, and continue this. Uh, I, I One of the things that I'm really concerned about this is because as it shows you on the report, and by the way, if you're interested, this report, I'm going to share the link uh, on, in the description. I got it actually at, at usbank.com investing. Um, and I, they're a good source. I, I do enjoy handpicking some articles and sharing with my audience because like I said, you get a lot of stuff out there that unfortunately they're just not correct information. It's not the right source. Um, so why is it important so much? I think what really magnifies the issue related to the, you know, the growing the U.S. federal government debt is that, you know, it's been a big concern. And the reason is because we are in an election year, as you can see, I'm highlighting this. Uh, you know, in election years, uh, we're picky about who we're going to pick, whether it's the blue color, you know, whether it's the red color. Um, you know, I'm very neutral now in these days. I, I don't think that anything, it's really truly going to save a country. I think we're in such a huge debt that I, I find it difficult. I find it difficult to understand how we're going to pay that down. Or are we going to ever pay that down? Um, and one of the biggest things, as you can see in this article, is saying that the government debt... Okay, it's financed through issuing treasure bills, notes, and bonds. The treasurer has been required to issue increased amounts of debt into recent times. The recent upturn of interest rates means that the cost of financing government debt is more expensive. So, for example, I, if, if I show you the chart below, you can see that the average interest rates from 2014 to 2024, look at this number right here as I'm circling in the bottom. That was roughly about 2020, okay, when we had, uh, unfortunately, you know, COVID and, and the pandemic just came out of the blues. Um, I mean, our, our, our GDP, I mean, our U.S. Treasury, it's our interest, was below 1%, okay? So here it shows 1.5, I think it was way below 1%. Um, I know based on a lot of reports and analytical, you know, financial uh, financial charts that I have read is that a lot of that was under 1%. I mean, there was banks 
I mean, uh, you know, consuming all these loans because it was so cheap, the money, right? And that's what boosted, you know, the real estate and the stock market because uh, a lot of these private equities, uh, hedge funds, they were just borrowing money and borrowing money because it was below 1%. It was like free money. I mean, think about it. Wouldn't you, think about this for a moment, wouldn't you borrow right now $1 million for 1%? I know I would. I don't know about you, but I would. To me, that's no it's it's a no-brainer. And that's exactly what was happening to all these financial institutions. They kept borrowing and borrowing money, and the government was doing the same thing. So now we are looking at average where right now the government, while it was issuing all these treasure bills and notes and bonds, you know, it was it was costing them less than one percent. Now we're looking at in recent years, look what it shows here as I'm highlighting 3.23. Okay, and that's as of April. Since then, it has even increased more. Okay, my biggest concern with this debt is growing. It's it's just outrageous. Is the fact that the interest, um, with the inflation factor that we're having, um, it's going to be very very difficult for the government to pay. So I'm going to show you the bottom here. Another chart. It says the ten year U S Treasury yield, twenty five years through May seventeen of twenty twenty four. This was the most recent chart I could find for to share with you. Uh, with you, and right there you can tell the spike. Look at this thing. I mean, this is huge. I mean, it's just a spike completely. I'm not talking about that. It's been the worst. I mean, if you look back on the left side, as I'm circling here, in in the in the late nineteen nineties, it was terrible. OK, um, in the 80s, we know that we had interest, which was outrageous. I mean, we, we were dealing with a minimum of 12 to 18 percent. That was an average. If you wanted to take a car loan, if you wanted to take a, you know, borrow money for a house, it was extremely expensive. However, however, <laughs> home was uh, during the 1990s. You could buy for less than one hundred thousand dollars, a brand new house. Tell me where you can find that now here. It's almost almost impossible to do, right? Um, and the same thing is borrowing any money. Credit cards were lower, food was lower. I mean, there was a lot of things. But now, what, what I'm looking at, and which is a little concerning, is this next next paragraph that I want to share with you. Is that look what it says? The treasured bond issue has increased to cover rising debt levels. The U.S. Treasury borrowed $748 billion on the first quarter of just this year, 2024. Okay. And then it plans to borrow another $243 billion on the second quarter. And then on the third quarter, another 847. Now, what happens is that, you know, the Treasury debt supplies expands and it keeps rising. Now, here's what it's something which I think is a red flag and I wanted to share with you. If you look down on the chart, it says, who are the holders of the U.S. Treasury debt? Who's holding this debt, right? The nodes and all these treasure bills. China, if you look here in the bottom to the left, as I'm circling, foreign holders, we used to have 43% in 2013. Okay, so back in 2013, which is the light blue charts, uh, the bars, I'm sorry, they were 43%. Right now, it's down to 33%. That's more than 10%. So what does that, what, what does that matter to us, Liz? Well, I'm going to tell you why it matters. Because right now, for example, one of the biggest treasure purchases that we used to have was China. Mm -hmm. And China, likely, it says right here, it's less likely to spend its treasure holdings if it doesn't have as many dollars as they had. Why? Because based on the reduced U.S. trade, they're not they're not getting that many U.S. dollars like that they were. Right? Remember, we have brought supposedly all these other companies to the U.S. Uh, to do manufacturing, right? To produce, you know, certain things after COVID. The problem is by not China not having this kind of amount of monies in dollars coming into the country, they're going to cut back. They're going to cut back on buying into these treasure bonds. So that's the decline right there. And that's not the only one. Look at Japan. Japan is focused more intentionally in funding their own debt. Right now, Japan is the number one with the highest GDP right now, bigger than even the U.S. But even Japan is holding back and saying, hey, I'm not buying a U.S. treasure because at this point, we need to pay down our debt in our country. So again, going back to the chart and why this all matters, because it kind of, you know, it, it, I call it a, you know, the government is trying to kick down the can 
down the road. And it's just, it's, it's, it's just increasing and it's getting worse and worse and worse. And when you look at these charts and you understand them, um, I think what's important is to see that we are heading downhill. I mean, this is this to me, I don't know how how is it going to be possible, really, honestly, the government to be able to ever pay this down. Um, but right now, this is my concern. Here we see individuals. Okay, individuals right now has increased as of 2023. They are buying into uh it has increased um up to 27%. And the reason for that, because again, the interest went up, and when interest goes up, then we have, you know, we have more um savings interest, right? We have money markets, yields, everything goes up. So people are trying to go to safe harbor, which is hey, I know that if I invest in the US Treasury, right? And bonds and everything, it's 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 backed up by the government, right? So it's a very great asset because you have that security there in place. The same thing as I know a lot of people right now that take advantage again because of the interest they're putting uh, money into savings account, money market accounts, CDs. Uh, you can get right now, as far as I can recall, the I think the the highest yield that I've seen in CDs for twelve months right now it's about five and a half. Okay, now try that two years ago. It didn't even exist. You were lucky if you got 1%, right? So it's a good thing in that sense where treasure bills and, you know, interest and these kind of banks is great. Central banks, as you can see, that has not been a change since treasury. So they're not actually getting that much uh, treasure bills neither. And then we have another category for us into other. My main point of this video is to share with you that one of the things that really concerns me the most is how we're going to pay this debt down. It's 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 uh to me it's 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 very um very concerning. I'm not gonna lie, it really is. Um, even even if you read at these numbers, I mean, I mean, Ryan, look at the federal debt to GDP. Why does that matter? So, like I said, I'm looking down here in my notes. This matters. Look at 1974 to 2054. Look at these data lines, how they're increasing above 150%. I mean, this is, this is, I'm worried about this. 1974 all the way to a forecast of 2054. Do you see what it says to you 100%? You follow this line right here in 2024. That means that right now, a debt to GDP normally and in the U.S., it's about an average of 60 to 70 percent max. We have reached the 100 percent. And it doesn't stop there. OK, it's going to increase, expecting, as you can see in this chart, all the way to 150 percent by 2054. Now, I'm going to give you an example. Like I said, I know GDP in, in like I said, in Japan right now, they're the highest, they're the number one in the highest GDP. The thing is, like I said, they're not having a crisis with inflation because they start making the corrections way before the U.S. start, you know, uh, increasing the interest. I think the biggest issue that I've seen with the economy in this one versus to the financial crisis um, is the fact that they waited too long to increase, yeah, they waited too long to increase interest. And I know many people would disagree and watch this, you know, episode and say, well, Liz, you know what? I love when interest are low. Yeah, but it creates inflation, unfortunately. And it, it just bubbles the prices. Look, but again, what has happened with the real estate? We have had since the pandemic four years now, okay, we have had an increase about 40% in some cities across the United States. Okay, and others maybe at twenty five percent, but as high as forty percent. All right, and has it went down barely this year? For the first time, I can admit that I noticed that some of the prices, especially in the state of Florida, which still happens to be the number one, or I guess the favorite state for investors to come and buy, because that's who is really buying investors. Um, it's barely has gone down, maybe five percent. But if you compare it to prior to the pandemic. I mean, prices were like at least 30% cheaper to buy a house. So not only people cannot afford to buy a house because the interest are over 7%, but on top of that, you have to qualify, have more money. And the average to buy a house right now with these kind of, uh, you know, interests, it's at least you have to have an average of more than $65,000 as a gross salary for you to even qualify. 
Not to mention that your FICO score has to be over at least 675 score. Mm -mm. You, you cannot get any, any wonderful interest, okay? Even at 7%, if you're lucky to get a 7% interest in a 30-year mortgage. So the GDP is a concern because if we don't keep reducing the balance sheet, which is what? I mean, they're having an issue. And I think I think it says at the end of this article, and just try and share was, you know, the highlights of the article here, um, as I'm trying to, you know, make this video as short as possible, it, is that I really don't see how, how are we gonna pay this down? Honestly, I, I don't I don't see um how the government's gonna do it. I guess we need to wait and, and see what's going to happen because at this point, nothing is making sense. I mean, nothing is making sense and, and numbers don't lie. Uh, or can it? Yeah, some numbers can die, lie. And the reason for that, because we've seen again, as I mentioned a little bit earlier in, in, in this uh, you know, um, recording, that what happened is that we've been getting a lot of revisions come from the government. Oops, we made a mistake here. Oops, we made another mistake. Let's update the reports. Let's update. How is it possible that you release to consumers reports that are not accurate based on figures? Don't we know? The, we want to know the truth, right? So anyhow, my biggest thing is I think interest rates are going to probably drop. I think I'm suspicious that before the end of this year, uh, and right before the election, maybe if we're lucky, we might see a quarter of a drop. Maybe, yeah. I'm kind. Of, I don't have the crystal ball. Don't get me wrong, but I can probably be suspicious that maybe we'll drop at least a quarter. And just to, I think it was it would be more to motivate, you know, the consumers to feel optimistic that. The government is doing better and that we're doing better um, as a nation. Um, but I think that's if it happens, I, I still think that it's it's going to be pretty surprising. But I don't see we mentioned it was going to be seven cuts of interest. And here we are um, in the summer. And so far, we haven't got any. Right. Um, so I will be doing another video. Um, I have been asked a few things through my social media accounts. If you want to follow me through LinkedIn and Facebook, um, you can look up my name, Liz Soria. Um, in case you don't know who I am, I do have a financial background. I am an accountant. And uh, I mean, I'm always fascinated to know the truth. Uh, after all, I live in this country and I want to know um, how I can prepare myself as a consumer and what things I need to do. So I will be doing probably a separate um, video about money savings tips and what kind of other things you can do um, to really uh, survive this type of economy. Because again, we are going through a crisis. And I think the people who, um, you know, they're proactive um, and they take decisions right now, even if there's small steps, it's going to make a huge difference for the future. And I think that if we get started now, it's thinking, what else can I do? One, to increase my income. Two, how to reduce my taxes. And three, where I need to invest. And as I always say, what better to invest in real estate? Um, I, I, I do invest in real estate. Um, I've been very passionate about it. And I do also like stocks. I'm honest. And yes, I like crypto too. <laughs> you have to diversify, right? You don't put all your eggs, uh, you, all your eggs in one basket. Anyhow, uh, hopefully I will be seeing you in the next uh, video. And like I say, if you have any questions, you have any type of, you know, um, even topics that you would like me to cover, um, I really would like to um, hear, you know, your 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 questions, your comments, and um, and again, I mean, your feedback is very important to me. Uh, as much as I try to bring value to to my channel, I think what matters is that you feel that I'm bringing that 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 value, which is the most important thing. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and if you do me a favor. It helps me to continue providing this free content is uh, just like, share, and hopefully subscribe. And uh, you can ring that bell. And that way, whenever I, you know, upload, a, a, you know, a new video, which hopefully I should be doing like at least, I would say two, three times a month. Um, I don't have much time for the rest, but it's been a little while that I haven't recorded any, um, you know, videos. And I just wanted to come back and, and, and definitely, uh, again, provide as much value as I can. And especially the right source, you know what I mean? Not, not what you see outside, because there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of fake news out there and we need to be cautious about that. Anyhow, thank you so much for taking time. I appreciate you. And uh, I hope uh, you come back very soon. Take care. This is Liz. Bye-bye.